Hello. Welcome to the A Face for Radio video series for this Friday, May the 1st. I do not have a show on Monday, which is May the 4th, which is why I'm wearing my The Child t-shirt today. Um, I have a show on the 5th, but I decided that I would wear this one today. That is the, the least of anyone's concerns, but I saw it in the video and wanted to explain it. Um, not that it, Baby Yoda needs any explanation. The child is adorable and we all know it. Anyway, um, this is WAMC Radio's live arts interview series on Instagram. Right now, our broadcast day is full of very important, very serious updates on the main station. So I asked leadership at the station if I could talk to artists and find out how they're living at home, what's going on with them. And uh, leadership at the station said, sure, go for it. So I'm working full time on the roundtable in the book show, but also getting to do this series, which is a sort of salve for me. I'm having a lot of fun with it. All of the interviews I've done so far are uploaded to YouTube. A couple of them are in the Instagram IGTV posts for WAMC Radio. Um, at some point it switched over what it was offering me where to upload them. And so I went with that before they were staying in the stories live, but disappearing. Anyway, they're all on YouTube though. If you search for WAMC, a face for radio video series, you'll find it. If you search for my name or the guest name, you'll probably find it too. You guys know how Google works, right? I think so. Well, most of you. Alrighty. So I wanted to say next week, this is Friday. So next week on Tuesday, the 5th, I'm going to speak with actor Elizabeth Stanley. On the 6th, I'm going to talk with singer-songwriter and multi-instrumentalist Mark Arelli. On Thursday, the 7th, I'm speaking with Jennifer Trainer thompson from Hancock Shaker Village, and she's going to, I believe, walk around Hancock Shaker Village with me to show me, us, any viewers, the baby animals. Baby animals at Hancock Shaker Village. Baby animals on the farm is a around Mother's Day spring tradition. They normally have lots of visitors. They're doing Zoom meetings with the animals, but they're also going to do my show. Uh, so lambs and piglets, etc. Should be pretty cute. And on Friday of next week, I'm going to speak with electro-comic mix master McQueen Adams. He's a Berkshire-based dude who's very interesting. He's going to play with synths for us and talk to me. Uh, today, not to bury the lead, I get to speak with Kate Baldwin and Graham Rowett, these phenomenal actors, singers, concert performers, podcasters, etc. They are wonderful, wonderful people. They are watching... So I'm going to go grab Graham's account. My friends will be here. Waiting? Connecting? Hi, it guys. Worked. Hi. It, it did work. How are you? Great. Good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. I mean, we're all, you know, nobody's like completely all right, but I'm reasonably well and all the better for seeing your beautiful faces. We're acting as though we are all right. Yeah. You don't have to act like, don't put on a, don't put on a show. Be however gritty you want. If this is your teletherapy for the day, I'm unqualified, but ready to listen. Uh, you're very sweet to say so. <laughs> That's very, I just might take you up on it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So before we, I don't know, first things first, tell me what you're comfortable sharing with people about where and how you're living and how you're kind of handling the, the pandemic and staying home? Uh, how are we handling it? I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I, I do know. We're, uh, we're adjusting to, of course, homeschooling. Everybody is having to teach their children. Uh, and that is its own adventure. Sarah, I kind of want to ask you this because I, I've asked a couple of uh, smart adults, and you're definitely in that category, people <laughs> who are smart, smart, smart grown-ups. Um, since I've been teaching third grade math uh, all week, um, my son is studying uh, for geometry. Okay. Do, I've heard of it. <laughs> do you, you, she's probably going to know. She's, she's smart enough she that she would will. know. Oh, bye, Graham. Um, this is how well it's going. Uh, it's fine. Do you know the two properties of a rhombus? Do you know what makes a rhombus? It's a parallelogram. <gasps> yes. Yes. You're so, uh, so good, a parallelogram. Yeah, two sets of parallel it's, sides. Well, it's a square that's like this, so it must have uh -huh. to have certain angles or uh -huh. something. But, but that's it, that's where I, that's where I tap out. Well, that's as, as about as well as I could do too. Uh, and, and most people uh, tap out there too. Um, all, the, uh, all the sides have to be equal. equal oh right. yeah, that makes sense. Because it's uh, a, you know, yeah, a I square think, that's- I think to yeah. myself, here we are doing third grade math and he's gotta know it and he does know it and he's a really good student and really curious and really eager and then I, but you know it's it's a humbling moment it's a oh, humbling sure. moment you're like i can't i don't know about a rhombus let's look it up <laughs> yeah um, well at least you i mean we can look it up you can look it up let's ask our friends you uh, can look it Alexa. up 
Um, <laughs> she knows what a rhombus is. She's it, listening right now. It's also trying to encourage, um, uh, you know, the teachers give uh, things to accomplish each day and sort of debating with our sons sort of the difference between doing only what's asked and maybe doing doing some more, doing doing some more so that the next time you come to the task, it'll be easier. Like, um, it's it's all that kind of negotiation. Yeah. Somebody uh, likened um, doing work at home, at, uh, likened it to like eating all vegetables and having no um, cookies, because at least at school, you get to hang out with your friends, you get to have recess, you get to have lunchtime, and you right. get to do the fun parts of school. And right. doing it at home, you're just doing the work, and then you got to deal with, you know, parents. <laughs> But but you you also had I saw you posted there was like he's learning about fairy tales so you got to hang out with Into the Woods that's pretty cool yes <laughs> yes and he really liked Into the Woods I think when I've tried to introduce uh, musicals in the past uh, it's always gone so so it's it's not uh, it's not always successful but this Into the Woods was a success and well I, there's I, good I, there's good stuff in that one for a I mean not to generalize or gender but like for a young guy because there's you know jack, a, jack. jack and a giant jack. and like yeah yeah and spooky that's, stuff that's, it's been a favorite so far good yeah. that's really fun yeah that was a hit and then we went through all the everything the muppets ever made yes we were enjoying kermit we were enjoying your kermit before we all got on i here. put him there for you i saw that Yay. you got the muppet show and i was like oh i have him obviously <laughs> who doesn't everybody has one right that they got at a flea market in woodstock i <laughs> I had a I had a Kermit the Frog as a kid. I totally had a Kermit the Frog yeah. as a kid. Um, I have a Muppet baby Kermit and Piggy. I think that they're in the basement. Maybe they'll make an appearance later. God, I didn't keep very was... much, but Muppet stuff I keep. Sure. There was a scene. I was just recalling the scene. I don't know which of them because we watched them all, but there was that vision where Piggy and Kermit dream of their future together, and they're pushing a stroller. You weren't in the room, but in the bassinet there was a little baby pig and a little baby baby Kermit. But to show the diversity, uh, Kermit was the baby. The baby frog was pink, and the baby pig was green. Okay. And it was a bizarre. <laughs> right, because lest we forget, Jim Henson and the Muppeteers, brilliant, yeah. insane, <laughs> but beyond brilliant. Um, well, there's also that plot line in. Um, I mean, we could talk about the Muppets forever. Oh, but yeah. There's that sure. one plot line in the Great Muppet Caper where there's, we're supposed to believe that. Um, that um, Kermit and Fozzie are twins. Yeah. Oh yep. my God. <laughs> well, they established it right at the beginning of the movie, so. And then they show a photo of their their deceased father, who is basically <laughs> Fozzie but green. Yeah, like With, and, and and he has Kermit's eyes. He has and Kermit's Kermit pupils. Eyes. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> what are we talking about? That's nightmare material, right there. <laughs> it's, it's very all strange. About Charles Grodin for me. It's all about <laughs> Charles Grodin. No, we. So Paul didn't remember if he'd ever seen that one, and we just watched it too. And I have it's so good. Um, two, two lines from that movie that are really kind of throwaways, but I think about them all the time, all the time, since I'm a kid. I don't remember not thinking about them. And it's when um, Lady Holiday goes, um, I feel as though thieves are breathing down my neck. And Charles Grodin goes, thieves are breathing down your neck. And he's like dancing and like, like breathing down her neck very silly <laughs> and then the but the way he says it he's like so ridiculous and that whole scene he's like dancing the whole time is absolutely over well, the top oh, and ludicrous and so the fun entire movie but that scene yeah. reminds me of uh the old tv show where they're doing the ballroom gags they're doing the yeah yep and to, to put one to make a supper club so they can all dance and do so funny good. stuff so good absolutely is funny. the other and one then... the one with oscar the grouch no, it's um, it's I think it's weirder than that. Not to like pretend I'm so unique, but it's at the fashion show. Um, Lady Holiday's narrating again her outfits that she designed, and she goes, "Um, it's fantastic and thank you, Carla." <laughs> it's just like stuck in my head. And now, like Paul will bring me a seltzer, and I go, "Oh, fantastic, thank you, Carla." And he's like, mm, "This is funny for we'll see, we'll see how much longer." <laughs> Well, and then, of course, the other one where Oscar the Grouch shows up randomly and the guy's saying, what, what are you doing in this movie? And he's like... Cameo. A brief, yeah, yeah oh yeah, a brief cameo or, mm -hmm. oh yeah. Or just something like that, just a quick cameo, I'll yeah. A cameo. Yeah, <laughs> those movies are so great because they also, they like, in the beginning, they're in the hot air, we really do have to change topics, but in the <laughs> beginning, they're, they're in the, um, the hot air balloon and they watch the credits. 
Yeah. Yes. You know, like it breaks the fourth wall or, or yes. is meta, I guess is yeah. more accurate. Yeah. All I time. Tell you, so just the last word I want to put on this is caper is better than not to take Manhattan. I'm just going to say that. Uh -oh. yeah. I'm not sure. Manhattan I'm not sure. It's all about Broadway. But. Caper is good though. I haven't I haven't watched Manhattan in a little while, so I'll watch that one again and then I'll I'll text you and let you know right. if I then agree or not. Then you'll see. <laughs> then I'll see. I do love them all. <laughs> um, so you're teaching. What what were you guys? What did you guys have lined up that was lost? What kind of gigs or concerts or travel did you have on the on the calendar that you had to erase? Uh, well, uh, right now I would I was supposed to be on the Playbill cruise to the Pacific Northwest. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, sort of. That would have been cool. Dark territory. Yeah, I was looking forward to that. And I was going to take one of my dear friends um, who I. Uh, <laughs> Our so, friend Ken just asked if we had stock in Muppet Enterprises. <laughs> well, we don't, but. <laughs> yeah, but this is a, a Muppet never uh, fan cast. So. Never <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should start a different show. No, those definitely already exist. Oh, but I actually, I did think of some another Muppet thing I did want to say, even though I asked you a different question about your own lives. It's okay. Okay. So. In in season one of the Muppet Show, does that season have Robin the Frog singing halfway down the stairs? We just I don't know. It, the, the box okay. had just arrived. Okay. Day, and we were gonna we haven't watched it jump yet. into it, and Colin wanted to finish watching the new season of Nailed It first. Okay, that's fine. That's all fine, we want Colin. to watch is is the first season of the Muppets. So we'll get there. We'll get there. And I'll yeah. let you know. So I just I just wanted to let you guys know Muppet thing. Robin the Frog is the manifestation of my heart outside my body. I can't deal with him at all. <laughs> like I love him so much. And is anytime any like he's anywhere, I'm bawling. He plays Tiny Tim in Muppet Christmas Carol. I can't. He plays. You know what I mean. I can't deal with it at all. So anyway, that's so good. If you need like a very sweet thing and a bittersweet heart pounding cry, Robin the Frog. I think we could all use one of those. Yeah. Colin, <laughs> yeah. Colin just had a birthday and we got him a, a beaker mouse pad. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. How did, was it a, what is it, an inside birthday, stay home birthday? Or yes. was it before? Yeah. We um, created a Minecraft server, invited all his friends to come play on it. Cool. Yeah, it's fascinating. And then friends the showed up, you know, on our front lawn with their bikes and signs and songs and, and stuff like that. It was really, really, really sweet. Um, to see people from a distance. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Um, Graham, as soon as we were shut in here, I thought about your home studio and with not a little bit of envy because I have a very makeshift situation building up around me over the weeks that I've been home because I am working from home for the station. Um, right. But are you, does that mean you're able to still do most of the projects that you would have had lined up? Yeah. Um, and for people who don't know, tell us why you have a studio and what sure. you're working on there. <laughs> Sure. So we moved from uh, Brooklyn to New Jersey uh, or a little over three years ago. Four years ago? Well, three and change. Coming up on four. Coming up on four. You know what? She's probably right. <laughs> um, and uh, I had been doing audiobooks for a company in New York, and I would go into their studios and I would record with them. And I've always loved... Um, uh, I don't know, I've always been into doing voiceover work and voice work in general, and the audiobook sort of satisfied my uh, craving for the uh, voiceover career that I'd never really had. But anyway, mm -hmm. I thought... Uh, you're uh, you're not so dead. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you could still have it. Yeah, but New York, voiceover in New York is such a, such a crazy endeavor. Um, but okay. I thought, well, maybe we, we're out in New Jersey now, we have this the room, maybe I could have my own booth. Uh, how do I, where do I find one? And, and I found one on Craigslist and I, and it was weighed a bazillion pounds and we moved it to this dilapidated garage in our backyard that looked like a kill room. And we found the money to, to uh, renovate. renovate the garage and we put this, the booth up and then it was like, well, I hope, you know, if you build it, will they come? And I was able to start using the the books I'd done for over the past 10 years as a, as a resume to some companies. And now, yeah, and then it started happening and rolling. And, and now, yeah, it's, it's an amazing position to be in because I have um, books to narrate through July right now. And, uh, and I, I've also involved in a lot of uh, uh, podcast audio dramas that I really enjoy. So the, the audio books, um, I can make a living 
on that, mm -hmm. and that hasn't been affected, thankfully, by the pandemic. And um, and then the audio drama uh, is sort of feeding my uh, artistic uh, soul. So I'm I'm in a really good place, although being in that booth by yourself for an extended period of time. But we're all kind of by ourselves right now, aren't we? Yeah. Yes, but you're yeah. isolated even further. You're like. Yeah, you can, get a little, you can get a little kooky if, after sure. a couple hours it's being by yourself and in a, in a, in a sound <laughs> like a room with no sound. Yes. Uh, and how does that kookiness manifest, Graham? What happens? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I'm so I'm so very grateful for to come into the house and Kate has has called me in for dinner Aww. and there's a beautiful meal on the table. I was listening to a podcast that said, you know, if you're working at home, you should still sort of keep the routine of saying, okay, I'm going to work. Right. And then when Even you're if done, it's going into the next room. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then come, coming back. And thankfully, I can go to another building. I can leave the house and go to the detached building. So I do actually have a, I'm back, I'm home. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and sometimes I work until Kate says, dinner's, dinner's ready. So it is like, coming in and sitting down with my family and really sort of uh, like I miss them and oh my gosh this is delicious yeah that's yeah. nice so I, it manifests itself in gratitude oh that's very sweet but it's not funny no it's not, it's not funny. <laughs> I thought yeah. you were gonna tell me that you just like I don't know go bananas oh, no, or funny. run around in a small room <laughs> there are lots of funny dances. There's lots of like silly dancing in the kitchen while while well, dinner gets cleaned good. up. That is good, yeah. For sure. I don't know if you know, but Huey Lewis and the News Ooh. have released a new album. Album, Perfect. and one of the songs on it is a, is a particular favorite of Graham and now Colin too. And it's one of those songs that is sort of an anthem for people who are. It's like an anthem for retirees, <laughs> uh, but it's so good. And we all feel a little like, well, yeah, not we Graham. All. Graham's working full time, but I feel like a retiree at this point. <laughs> you're no, not, but you're not, but you're doing a concert tonight. Yeah. A concert, a conversation tonight. Tell us about that. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, what am I doing? Yes. She's, she's got a full, a full uh, schedule. Yes, today. yes, yes, yes. I have uh, it. Uh, Georgia uh, Stitt's album, A Quiet Georgia. Revolution. Oh, George. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> Georgia it has a- That's how crazy life is, because before this happened, Kate was having days in the city where she was going from one event to another. Then we hit the, the pandemic, and Kate was wondering, like, well, what is life now? And right. it's ramped back up to a the digital equivalent, where Kate has something at four, she has something at five, and they're all different things, and they're all right. from home, and they're all over the over a, a webcam. And then she has something at seven thirty, seven yeah, seven, seven, has, seven p.m. So, so my friend Georgia Stitt uh, made an album uh, called A Quiet Revolution, right. and we're doing sort of a virtual uh, album release party tonight that Playville is hosting at seven o'clock, and there will be four singers. Um, I think it starts with Jessica Vosk and it continues with Brandon Victor Dixon and then it goes to Jeremy Jordan and then I'm going to close it out. And they're all songs that um, Georgia wrote. In my case, she arranged a tune that I asked her to arrange for my cousin's wedding uh, three years ago. Um, and is that the water is water is wide? It's called the water is wide. And it was my very first solo when I was in um, fourth grade. Um, I got to sing it when I was uh, at like the spring, you know, uh, recital, I got to start it off. And I remember thinking it was really hard. You know what? It kind of still is. <laughs> Your version is very beautiful. It's on the album and it's gorgeous. So that's, Thank you very that's much. wonderful. Yeah. And Georgia yeah. Stitt, I don't know, I've never met, um, but I admire and she's your, your like work wife. That's what I call her. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I call her my work wife. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, right? Yeah, yeah. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he doesn't have a say. He doesn't have what to say. Don't have a, just don't have a work husband because that's where it gets weird. <laughs> that would be weird. Yeah. I had a, I was, People do. I, I have a work wife, but he's but it's a male. And Paul knows. He came I before Paul. Because I'm just tougher work. than him, so I'm the husband. I ah. Again, I not to gender. I'm with, with Katie, uh, Kate <laughs> Reiners. And, uh, you know, we were together every day, all day. But I just, I thought, what about show sis? Oh, that's show cool, too, sis. Yes. It just feels better than show wife, even though we all know what that means. Yeah, it well, just, just means, means you're close. It's your, it's your best friend yeah. at, at But work. show sis, that yeah. feels more, that feels right. Yeah. And that was for Meteor Shower. That's right. 
we were backstage uh, and they built this, they, they put this giant monitor in our dressing room that was like a 47 inch video monitor. Video monitor. Uh, so we didn't even have like, oh, we thought we'd be going out into the back of the house. And, hashtag show sis. Uh, yeah, thanks. hashtag show sis. <laughs> show pro is go good too. We thought we'd go into the That's theater and, and be taking notes and watching the show. And then we quickly realized that the view on this giant monitor in our dressing room was better than standing at the back of the house. So we just, we never left this dressing room. Uh, so that's okay. Yeah, totally. So yeah. Meteor Shower was a play by Steve Martin that was on Broadway and you were the standby for both male characters as a four-hander starring right. um, Keegan-Michael Key, Laura Benanti, Amy Schumer, and Jeremy Shamer. That's Sorry. right. Okay. Um, and do I remember that you, like illness struck your four-person cast and you had to go on for both roles in one week? No, that was Kate. Oh, um, okay. Uh, Kate Reinders had that happen uh, in one week. Didn't she do it in one day? Like the matinee do Laura's part? I don't think she had to do it in one day, but I think it was the the one. It was definitely one week, and crazy. Uh, it was it was crazy, and she did. She killed it, and um, I don't know what happened to her. She she she's she's on a TV show now. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> sorry, I she's didn't. Fine. Know. Are you yeah. fine? She's on a TV show. Yeah, we have uh, a we have a good comment here. We should point out for non-binary pals, show Sibs, your show sibling. Oh, sure. I like it. Very, sibs. very good. I wish we very had good, one of it, but thank you. I thank like you, thank it. You. I mean, Showbro, Showbro has a nice rhyme. But it does. I, I get show Sibs. Um, yeah, whatever you need. And I actually thought uh, I it's thought, up to each up to each exactly. individual pairing. I didn't think I was going to go on, uh, and I was at peace with that. It's a it's a play. I'm making me nervous. I make everything I do. This is making me makes her What are you doing? Oh, I had you're a gonna spill water. glass on my knee. Um, I went on uh, in the last week uh, after I'd sort of already packed up the dressing room and brought stuff home. I thought well, that's it. And then uh, there was illness and I got to do one show and it was so nice to be able to it, 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 just to prove uh, to, to show people why I'd been in the building for months. That was <laughs> really awesome. They know why. Save I know, show. but save the show. Yeah, yeah, but you don't, you don't, you need, you need to be able to, you just want to do it because you've learned it. And it was really nice to get to do it one time. So they, we also have a comment now that says the show Sibs thing is a high school musical, the musical, the series shout out. Have you guys watched that? Well, that's the show that that's... Kate Reinders is on. I oh, oh she is. Oh, wait. Thing. Oh, but oh, I didn't know. She's that. Miss Jen on that. Yeah. Is that her? Yeah. <laughs> she's very funny. I didn't know. I that did that watch that. Sibs was a. No, 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 it's not. Oh, okay. it's not. I was wrong. I was wrong. Okay. I didn't get it. I missed, a, okay. I missed the beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's no, it. it's not. My whole job is to know actors' names. It's the only thing I like. Yeah. <laughs> and so the fact that I didn't learn her name, I didn't know she was Miss Jen. Oh, boy. No, it's okay. No? It's okay. No, it is. Okay. She's, she's in Utah. She, they film up in, uh, in Salt Lake City. And uh, I think the production is on pause right now. I'm sure it is, yeah. For so. the second season. I, what about people who are on national tours? Like I keep thinking about people in national touring casts who- They just went home. A, yeah. a, a kid I grew up with who's younger than me um, was in Aladdin and he just was suddenly back in Saranac Lake, New York. And I was like, you could tell, you know, from Instagram, he's like, I'm home now. I was like, yeah. what do you mean you're there? Kind of uh, out. I imagine there might've been like on a on a Thursday, how, how quickly between the, the pause on live performances to buying their tickets to go home. And then how many of them had sort of let their apartments go because they knew they right. were going to be on the road for a year. Yeah. So they're all Homeless. home or they're yeah, living with their parents yeah. or, or a friend. Yeah. My, my work wife, Ian, his brother, Neil was in the uh, Peace Corps in Thailand and they just had to come home and he had, didn't have anywhere to stay, had to self quarantine because he traveled from all the way around the world. Right. Um, his license had expired because he was going to be gone for a couple of years. It was, it was bananas. I mean, he's fine. He figured it out, but it was like, what? I mean, there's so many, so many, um, what am I trying to like, um, jump scares isn't right. <laughs> Not the right word, but it kind of feels like that. Right? Like so many just like crazy left turns that everyone's lives are taking because Right. Nobody anticipated the severity of something like this, or, or not nobody, but most people did not. And so many families that have been slammed back together in a in a way like think of those, 
you know, the kids on Dear Evan Hansen who are now living back with their families and the, the parents are like, well, I didn't think, wait, you're here. How long are you here for? Like they're all <laughs> in the same place tr getting reacquainted. And hopefully a part of the, that, that's more wonderful than it is uh, terrible. Stressful. <laughs> well, I imagine it's as, as varied as every family is. Like there's just degrees, you know, yeah. like, some people are really psyched that their kids are home. And some people are like, well, I thought I finally got rid of you and so, et cetera, et cetera. But you guys didn't think about making Colin move out. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> it, the day is young. Um, but yeah, even, even we are trying, uh, uh, there's that sort of, you know, we're home for every meal. We're here for every uh, uh, you know, day in, day out. And that's, that's new and getting, it's getting reacquainted with each other a little bit, not yeah, a lot. Sure. And and also it's wonderful because you're like, Oh no, I like you. And, 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 and Thank goodness. No, but I mean, right. right. That's how I feel too. I, I, I Cause I'm that. a lot. I know that, but how, how lucky am I to, to be like, Oh, I, I'm happy to be stuck with you. Another Huey Lewis in the news. Things that we know. Muppets, Huey Lewis. Have that's you ever seen him live? No. no. Have you? A few you, years ago at Urban Plaza. Did you tell me he was a big sweaty mess? No. No, I didn't. Someone told me he was like the sweatiest man. I don't recall that. He, um, my, my best friend Emily Dickens just sent us a hard eyes emoji because Huey Lewis is our, not our passion, but we do like him very much. We like, oh. I mean, the, the band. Um, the album Sports turned 30 the year I turned 30. And he did a big tour where he played the whole album. So I interviewed him by phone for WAMC and then got tickets to the show in New York, which was the closest one. I mean, like, I love going, you guys know, I love going to New York, but for like a weeknight concert, I'm like, could we be a little, could somebody just come to Albany like, once in a while? Please. Um, I, know, I know he played it, um, uh, uh, where, what, there's the, is it Wolf Trap in the Berkshires? Tanglewood. He was at Tanglewood. Tanglewood. Sorry to switch that up. That's okay. But uh, I think he came through and we had uh, rehearsal. At the yeah, time. you had rehearsal or a show. Um, I didn't make that either, which doesn't I would make love sense. to. I, I hear he's the nicest guy. I hear he's really nice. And, yeah. and that always makes me feel happy to know that. Uh, there were some, at the show we were at at Irving Plaza, there were some teenagers dressed in like full, like Huey Lewis in the News 80s kind of get up, probably from a specific video, but my knowledge doesn't go that deep. And he spotted them and like made sure his manager got them and brought them back to meet him and get a picture. It was very Yay. cool. Um, and, I, and I learned all of that by observing wildly. Because <laughs> I had nothing to do with any of it. But I was just like, what's happening? Some kids addresses him. And now they're going over there. And now they're going over there. Oh, how nice. <laughs> yeah, really cool. Um, our friend Ken was pointing out that Kate's production of Love Life at City Center yeah. has been delayed. But not canceled. No. Yeah, the hope is that we'll do it uh, sometime. Uh, but we really just don't know I what know. it's going to be. Everybody's seasons. I mean, it's just people working ahead for years sometimes on what they're going to be able to do and right. cast it with, and, and booking actors and directors. And then you can't just shove it all into one, a season next year if normal is ever normal and audiences are allowed to gather. Yeah, it's a job I wouldn't want to have is the- Right, figuring that out. Something that might happen. It seems to, I was on the phone with um, people at, at City Center yesterday, yesterday and they're saying it's, you know, it's changing day by day. Mm -hmm. uh, just what is, uh, what is possible, what is expected, what is, um, you know, what we could plan on. I'm not sure we, we can plan on a whole lot, but Love Life was a show that um, hadn't been seen uh, in New York since 1948. And people were very excited about it because it's a little known um, musical. Uh, however, it was it, sort of the first concept musical and a lot of writers um, like Kandra and Ebb and Stephen Sondheim uh, talked about seeing it and uh, it, it being very influential. Um, oh. and, their um, ideas for future musicals. So um, that's why I think it deserves to, to be seen again, because I think we're all about, um, you know, uh, having, at the time in 1948, it, it, it had a, a fair amount of success. Nanette Febre, which is the part that I uh, am taking on, uh, the role that she, she won a Tony Award for it. And um, 
is just funny and charming and, and, and wonderful. And it's the kind of role that as an actor, you really look forward to because you get to do all the things. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and Brian Stokes Mitchell uh, stands there and sings gorgeously with his incredible baritone For voice. once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you guys do you guys know oh go ahead Kate sorry yeah no I just think um I just think I think now we are ready to listen to and to talk about the issues that love life brings up I think in 1948 people weren't uh so excited or interested in seeing a, a musical that dealt with uh divorce and ah. that's what this show talks about so okay it talks about how do you how do you remain a part of that person's life when you are no longer married to them do you, oh, that's, I'm going to look in, I'm going to look into that show. My, <laughs> there's, my, my sister um, just left her husband and there's, I don't know very much about that at all. And I know like one musical won't fix it, but I might as well <laughs> get in there and learn, <laughs> see what well, that has to say. Well, our incredible director is Victoria Clark and you might know her as an actress. Um, mm -hmm. She won a Tony Award for Light in the Piazza yep. about 15 years ago. And she, but she always wanted to be a director. And so she's kind of in a way coming back to her roots and and doing the thing she always wanted to do but sort of got sidetracked with this like brilliant acting and singing career amazing the uh, poor poor thing i know <laughs> really feel so bad for her <laughs> she can do everything really well it's kind of annoying oh, um, what a burden she, <laughs> but she <laughs> talks about her own you know marriage uh one that has ended and, and and a second one that is still going and quite successful but her relationship with her ex uh, especially when it comes to raising her child. And she says, you have to make room for that person in your life because you shared something very important with them. You shared a, a part of your history with them at one point, And then you have this other, this person that you created together. And why isn't there? Why don't we talk about how there can be room for all kinds of love in, in your life? Um, and so her whole, you know, I don't want to give away too much about the show, but it was about how to not make things, um, you know, a done deal and you sign on the dotted line and then your, you know, your decision is made and, and your relationship is over. But how do you, how do you continue on uh, and honor everybody's individuality and, and, but also uh, take care of each other? It's such a lovely message. It's about taking care of each other and taking care of a family. Ah, oh, I really, now, now I really want to do it again. Jeez. Well, you're going to get to, you're going to yeah, get I to. Hope so. Yeah, well. I hope so. Thanks. We'll put it, we'll fund it ourselves. We'll put it up in my <laughs> backyard. <laughs> Sure. Paul's building a patio. I can tell him to build a stage mm -hmm. instead. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> we have a great audio system yeah. and everybody, so that everybody can stay far, far away and hear it yeah. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to happen. Uh, but uh, I think there's a, obviously a fascinating question, the larger question of, of live theater, live performance, and people gathering. I mean, it's such a crazy, you know, maybe, maybe they're going to find that, uh, uh, cure, maybe they're going to find that um, vaccine. vaccine, and this will all be, uh, anyway, but we're not, we're not, I don't know. we don't know, it's fat, it's a, it's a crazy time, the number of ways that people are, I didn't have a chance to watch the public, um, uh, what are we, to, what are, uh, the, the play that was, uh, the, oh, the, aired, the new, um, the new Richard Nelson, Richard Nelson play, yeah. um, but the way that art is trying to find new outlets right now, um, successful, unsuccessful, experimenting. Um, and yet there are also these uh, forms that have existed, such as, you know, uh, podcasts, audio dramas, um, you know, there's, there's uh, ways that are, are continuing to, to generate. And I think new people are discovering because they don't have what they would normally turn to. I don't know. Yeah. Or TV, what the, the shows and the TV productions that are all have all start, stopped production. You know, is there going to be a are they going to run out? I don't know. It, it, it doesn't seem, yeah, I don't know. It does, I mean, shows will run out of episodes, but will we run out of all new? When would that happen? When there's so like such they, a plethora of stuff. They just rerun it. Or do yeah. you have reruns in an age of digital culture where the entire season is dropped at once? I mean, does that even, the reruns hey, Graham, even? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful thing to think about. <laughs> I'm Sarah LaDuke, and this is the A Face for Radio video series for WNC Live Arts Interviews on Instagram. I'm speaking with Kate Baldwin and Graham Rowett. Um, I'm, I've said this would be half an hour, but now we've gone 35. Are you guys out of time, or do you want to keep talking for a minute? 
Sure. Do you have something? You have, do you have a, a, hot, a hot topic? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have talked about some entertainment already, but I did, I wanted to ask you what you guys are watching that you want to recommend to people who are, who are tuned in or watch Ooh, this later. You see one. You guys, what we do in the shadows. <laughs> yes, yes. It's the greatest thing it's to ever. It's the exist. greatest. And yeah. Beanie's on it. Beanie's on it. <laughs> yeah. Not on this new season, but she was on a, the, the previous season. Yes. Yeah. Actually, Beanie was in Hello, Dolly with Kate. Yes. And uh, yeah, but I just, I think those, those guys are, oh. those actors are so funny. I just They're love so everything about them. Uh, every single one of them I, I, I love. Season two couldn't have come at a better time. Uh, we haven't watched, yeah, we haven't watched season two yet. Oh. Uh, but well, we're, we're going are, to. We're real connoisseurs. We oh. really like the show, so we've watched season one. I don't know. You know what? I have not been behind on something I like as much as that ever before, but time has lost all meaning, and life is weird now, and I yeah. do interviews with a camera in my face in front of this wall, and then, yep. you know, it's just all, it's bananas. It's so yeah. weird. Like, I'm, we're probably watching less, oh, because I also got a Nintendo Switch, and I was playing Animal Crossing, like... Did you there, get a very real many hours. switch or I got the a switch, switch light. light? Switch right, light. because all the regular switches, everybody went to buy. They they all got bought up. Yeah, uh, it's hard to find we, a switch light now too. But Paul was like, right. "You're gonna like this mindless chores game, so let's get it while you're home." <laughs> I don't I, play video games normally, but I do like this one. Everyone loves it. Um, I'm fascinated by the things that people have snapped up. Like you can when you start, you sit down to uh, Google uh, or go to Amazon to buy something and then as you're typing it in you're like oh wait a thousand other people have just done this as well <laughs> so uh webcams oh sure right and yeah. i i we wanted another webcam and uh i'm like oh that's going to be impossible um so things like switches things like webcams i'm thinking soon um professional uh, uh, scissors for oh, people to cut definitely. their hair at home. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah They're yeah. probably all gone. I haven't even looked. You guys, your hair both looks fantastic. Have you, how are you maintaining this? What are you doing? Thank, Thank you. you. Well, you're both hair, you're both follically blessed in the first we place. We do this a lot. I do this a lot. <laughs> I, uh, so these are my bangs. Yeah. <laughs> if I had courage, <laughs> I would, I would snip them. If I had the right pair of scissors, I would sure. snip them. I'm sure. sorry, they're back ordered. They are back order. Yeah. You'll get them, so, and then you'll do it. No more bangs. So <laughs> just doing the side sweep. Graham, how are your bangs? Uh, well, I was in Les Mis for three years. <gasps> so my hair still remembers how to grow out. Honestly, <laughs> when I met him, he had just come off the road with Les Mis, and he could make the tiniest little ponytail with his oh, long Not locks. really. Mm -hmm. It was never quite long enough. We were doing 1776, and mm -hmm. he was playing Richard Henry Lee. And he grew a little ponytail, and I was Put like, "Put a little bow on it." Very I know, little, I teeny never, little bows. Yeah, it was a little long, but it was never in a ponytail. But why don't you want it to be in a ponytail? The point is, <laughs> my hair knows what to do. Yeah, in it crisis. certainly does. It's in a crisis. Does. Can we talk about your uh, your beard comb? Oh yeah, oh, you wow. have it on you. Oh, uh, that'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> this it's is juicy. Now, this is what I came here for. It's a good prop. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Yeah. So. so he just sits there at, at, when we're watching what we do in the shadows at night, and he combs his beard. Look, look it has a little, it has a little, uh, has a little uh, case. Oh there you go. A little, little. And then you, it's when it's just getting back to a length where you can just, it's the most soothing <laughs> feeling. Yeah, okay. self-soothing. Yeah. Sometimes you put a little beard oil in there. It smells really good. The crazy I can't. thing is we have some people, some hilarious people writing comments, but because at the last minute I realized Man, we, can't, we can't do the iPad vertically uh, in, in our holder. Mm -hmm. So we switched to the phone at the last minute and I can't, and we're so far, it's like. You can't what? read that? No, I do, but I have to do a little bit of this every time that. That's okay. No, no, this is not bad. Maybe when we're out of quarantine, you gotta visit the old eye doctor. Just so that our friends know that we see them commenting, but every now and then I'm like, what did he say? He said man bun coming in May. It's true. It's true. Jeff Talbot said that. And, um, and man bun and sourdough, sourdough uh, starter. <laughs> I got, sourdough starter? I don't have one. I don't have one. Because I have this Instagram series instead. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go find that starter. Um, so I wonder if Paul is in his office Googling beard comb. Oh, my friend Emily says Paul needs a beard comb. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. It's uh, this is a Chicago comb company, <laughs> and uh, I highly recommend it. Um, I had to shave my. I did a self tape about four weeks ago for something that I don't think they even watched, but I shaved for it. And it was like, you stare at your face for a day and you're like, this was a terrible mistake. <laughs> so now it's back into the, it's just these little tufts that, that are the white tufts that are driving me crazy. But everything's fine. Let's get back to great. Stream, it's fine. other streaming uh, recommendations. So okay. what we do in the shadows was the first. What we do in the shadows, Killing Eve is back. Killing okay. Eve. We're very happy about that. Um, we started Miss America. Mrs. America. Mrs. America. And I obviously shouldn't talk about it because it's uh, yeah. not going to get it right. And the but fact quiet. That I can't get it right. <laughs> even I that I am not treating the subject matter. I literally stopped the uh, the program, the, pro the the television program. Right. I'm, I'm 93 years old. Um, yes. And I stopped it and I quizzed him on who the people were that were talking. <laughs> What the location in New York City was. You're tough. <laughs> You're tough. See, Graham's Canadian, so he didn't oh, right. necessarily right. Right. Uh, know uh, who politicians are and, you know, who was president in 1972 and who George McGovern, you know, so, yeah. so it's, um, you know, it's, it's informational right. uh, too. So. But that it's very was, good. For that I'm one, my own. Uh, a girlfriend of mine said, should we, we should watch this like schedule when we'll watch it and then talk about it after. And I was like, yeah, and it was like, they messaged the girls. And then I watched the trailer with Paul in the room and I was like, we're gonna, um, Kelly and Emma and I are gonna watch this. Do you wanna watch it? And he was like, oh yeah, I definitely watch it. I was like, you passed the quiz, good job. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> if you had said no, we would have to talk about why. Yeah. <laughs> What's well, going on? Then we sat down and Googled, you know, because I, I, I remember John Oliver's segment on the ERA Right. Uh, last year and it ratified was, that was a big, as a Canadian it was very like what is this and I was fascinated so then last night and then so when Virginia won back the house and the senate was it both um and I was like oh they were the, the 38th state they were the 38th state that has not ratified it and if they do it then they should and they will and so we sat down and we googled what's the status of it right now mm -hmm. and it they ratified it but there is a debate that whether or not, uh, because there was a deadline on when the ratifications were to be done by, but people say that doesn't matter because other things have passed, other amendments yeah. went through, even though they were ratified after the date. Um, and then uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg thinks that they should start over um, because the times have changed. But then we said, well, what is the exact wording that people are debating? Um, and it seemed like it was very, it's very, the idea is very, it's, it's easy it's, to get yeah, behind. It's not a complicated should be. document. Should be. It should be an easy thing. Uh, uh, equal protections under the law. Yep. Yeah. Should be so, easy. Yeah. And so I said to my mother, who is 74 years old, are you going to watch Mrs. America? And she says, I'm not going to watch that. I lived it. I can't. Uh, fret about how frustrated and angry I was Man. in 1975 living in Illinois when the ERA was was voted down. That um, sounds very valid to me. Yeah, very so, valid. So I'm trying to convince her that in fact she should watch it. Because, sure. Well, you know, um, why not start the conversation again? And I think it's I think it's good TV. It's good storytelling, and it's good. The TV. cast is the cast is amazing. And Kate Blanchett is fantastic, and just a little yeah. on this side of like arch and campy. Yeah. Like she makes Phyllis Schlafly that person that you're like, ooh, you're fun to spear. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. So yeah, Mrs. America, we'll check that out too. Yeah. Mrs. Are America. you anything else? Uh, I every time Ozark comes around, Kate's like, we got to watch Ozark, and uh, she somehow always finishes the season ahead of me. So I started a season needing to catch up. And I said, just don't start. I'll try again. And I know, I know that's amazing TV. You're I it. know it is. I haven't seen, I haven't, it's on my list also, but I haven't seen one episode. Yeah. But I will, I, I will. My switch just, broke, so I'll start watching TV again. <laughs> I live for John Oliver. Yes. Uh, I'm very uh, delighted to see how Saturday Night Live is trying to yeah. stay the course and figure out what they're doing. It was very mm -hmm. sweet when they came back three weeks ago. It was very comforting. 
uh, like a friend, like how you been? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like uh, the things we watch together, I, anyway, there are just days of the week you're like, what day is it? Is there a new episode of what we do in the shadows? Is it, I just need more. We need more shows like that. Well, what do you need to watch? Well, we, I'll, we, I'll have, text you later. We rented um, the live performance of Fleabag. And okay. we have, I think we're down to like nine days before that rental yeah, expires. Yeah, we gotta watch that. I should and have we, that too. We might stop happy, start Happy Valley. Okay. It's a BBC show, Happy Valley. Uh, okay. a, a, a female detective. It's all centered around her. Recommended. Recommended. Anyway. Anyway, but yeah, and podcasts. And podcasts. But we're Lots not of podcasts. So, right. Do anyway. you do There's a wonderful podcast that I love listening to called Meditative Story. Have you heard of it? I haven't heard of this one. Um, Ariana Huffington is one of the creators of it, and uh, it talks about, it gives you a, a story, a fictional, sometimes based on real life events, um, where the speaker will pause every you know 10 minutes and then you are guided through a meditation that ha might have something to do with the story that you've just heard and it's also there it's scored and the music is very soothing and relaxing and i use it as a way to sort of like reset my mind i'm not very good at meditating i don't know if you've ever tried meditating i started last summer i had a um an anxiety attack my first ever oh my and gosh. i've been meditating pretty regularly since then wow. using Headspace, the app Headspace, right. which you've heard of because it's everybody's talking about it now. And they made a bunch of their services free for people in New York when New York went on pause. And oh. yeah, but I also I never did it before because I I can't can't slow down, can't slow down. Right. Yeah. It's um, really hard. And then the this app tells you, like, we know you can't. So just keep sort of trying if you're thinking of something else and you can guide your brain back to just your breath, do it. But if you have to think about the other thing, think about the yeah. other thing. So. I also That's recommend uh, brain.fm is a great app um, for meditative uh, music. And I don't know if they are guided so much as sometimes I just want to hear uh, music that relaxes me. Yeah. Um, let's go with from the chat room, people are recommending from the chat. That's um, fine, Graham. The uh, comments. Sorry, succession and West Wing and uh, normal people on Hulu, but uh, that just looks like a, a big kissy kissy show. I'm sure it's more than that. <laughs> what do you know. mean by kissy kissy show? Well, the trailer is just about uh, just this couple kissing in different places. <laughs> normal and that's, and I'm not people. Gonna, I'm not gonna tell you what that, and, and, but if our friend Jeff recommends it, it's, it's obviously more than that, so. Um, oh, it's ba is it based on a novel by Sally yes. Rooney? Okay. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. How, how about friends. books? I'm having a hard time reading books right now. Uh, I was reading. Books. I was reading Cameron Esposito's collection of um, autobiographical essays for an interview before this hit, and then I. It's very, very good, and I will finish it. But I haven't. Again, I haven't been reading. Um, my favorite book of the last few years is a book called Boomtown by Sam Anderson, and it's a. It's this is going to sound really weird. <laughs> But it's about the it's about Oklahoma City, the founding of Oklahoma City, which was crazy, and the Thunder, the basket NBA team going there, and it's also about the the weather and a little bit about the Flaming Lips. And it's Sam is one of my favorite writers. It's absolutely brilliant. So if you, I mean, if you can't read right now, you can't read this. But if you want a recommendation from me, it's Boomtown. Love it. That's fantastic. I, I realize one of my problems is I also read. I'm constantly reading uh, in preparation to narrate a book. So it's like constantly reading f to do a book report. Sure, sure. Is, no, I know what you mean. Yeah. I mean, but I don't I do audiobooks, but I do book interviews and I love reading. And then when I right. have to read it, even if I chose right. to read it, I chose to do the interview. I'm like, I have to read this by Wednesday. Yeah. <sighs> I it's, hate you book. It's a, little, <laughs> it's a little bit of work. And then if you're lucky, it's a pleasant book. And that's, that's always the nicest thing is like, oh, I don't mind, I like this book. But it's Graham also well, narrates a bunch of science fiction where the pl names of uh, characters yeah. or planets or galaxies or ships could be pronounced any number of ways. And so he's got to keep a list of how to pronounce everything. And yeah, that's hard. Himself. Yeah. There was a name uh, with no vowels. <laughs> and that was hilarious. Sometimes when you get one of those, you're like, I'm 
What, what, what job am I doing? What job is this? My friend Emily says to watch Schitt's Creek and Afterlife. Schitt's More TV Creek. Rest. Schitt's Creek forever, is great. Forever, forever high on the list. Yeah. Uh, and Afterlife is the Ricky Gervais thing I should do the trailer yeah. with. And uh, it's inter I'm tempted to try that. Yeah. It's not, yeah, we'll put it on the list. Shit's Creek. <laughs> I really want to try that. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm watching it. I'm I'm in season three, maybe, and they're, they just, it ended, but I'm in, I'm behind, and it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's, oh. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you can, anyway. Anyway. Um, I should let you guys go. You have okay. your studios and your son. What is he doing? What's Colin doing? He just is leaving Not you sure. alone? He, I think right now, is doing a Nintendo Labo kit. Uh, which is a cardboard peripherals that you build and craft, and then you insert the switch into it, and the Joy Cons go into different parts, and you have a multitude of cool things that are the, the switch wouldn't be able to do on its own. However, that's what we think he's doing. The likelihood is that he wandered, he took a switch, and instead is playing uh, Splatoon or something like that. Splatoon is a funny one. It's colorful. It's good. It's like it's how, do, how do, Nintendo's like, how do we make Call of Duty but for kids? Yeah. So we'll there's there's the squids and their ink. Yeah. He's it's cute. I've seen Paul play that one. He's also building a zoo on Minecraft with his cousin who lives in Illinois, which was super sweet. You know, they're yeah, that's great. They made an aquarium yesterday, and they're making a, a panda yeah. enclosure. It's very very sweet. And we pointed out, we were just saying to Colin last night, that's not something we would have thought of doing. Had it right. not been for quarantine. Yeah. Right. Well, no, I did that. I have my, my niece lives in Saranac Lake and two of my, I have like play date, video play dates with my friend's kids who live just a few miles away. And because I'm talking to my niece so much and <laughs> I'll just be honest, Evie and Charlotte are much better behaved than my niece, Linda. <laughs> so I was like, I wonder if I can like get them on Zoom and she'll see how they listen to me and answer me when I ask them questions. <laughs> Right. And she did, and it went really well. But I never would have thought of it if we weren't always on the screens now, in this yeah. way, in this interactive yeah, way. Yeah, there've been there've been uh, requests. I last Sunday had a Zoom meeting with my friends from uh, acting class uh, from from when we graduated college in 1997. So we haven't, you know, gotten together as a group for 23 years. But all of a sudden, here we are. Yeah, and, uh, and it, this was a good, a good enough, you know, reason to go ahead and and check in with everybody, which was wonderful and delightful and bizarre and all, all those things. Um, and other groups from college too, that, that people are taking this opportunity to, to, to get a group together and that you normally wouldn't have, have done, right? right. You have one with your Mamma Mia friends and mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of lovely to yeah. connect with people. Like we would, um, because we're parents, we quite often our home, we put our son to bed and then we'll, we'll watch some television or something or uh, get ready for a project or whatever. But, but now we're like, hey, we can, let's, let's get on a Zoom call with some friends and play some Jackbox games. And, we're, and, and that's not something we would do normally. So the, the being, we're being social in ways that we weren't before and that's kind of great. Yeah, there's some silver linings, yeah. but. Yeah, then one of them. Zoom burnout, which is a yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, speaking of which, I have I have pushed you yeah. <laughs> to nearly Thanks, an hour. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. But thank you so much for joining me. And if you guys want to have a Zoom cocktail with Paul and I, you don't have to commit to it now, but it doesn't have to be a, a formal of interview. Of course, of course. Okay, well, whatever. I'll <laughs> get at me if you want. Thank you so much for joining me and, and uh, stay safe in there, okay? Thank, thank you. you. All right, bye-bye. That was an overlong edition of the A Face for Radio video series. I'm Sarah LaDuke. That was Graham Rowett and Kate Baldwin, who are fantastic, as you can see. I will, when I post this on YouTube in a few hours, um, I will have made a list of all their recommendations and they'll be there just to, just to grab. So in case you didn't you know, catch them as they passed by as we chatted. Next week, I'm speaking with Elizabeth Stanley at one o'clock on Tuesday, Mark Arelli at one o'clock on Wednesday. Jennifer Trainer Thompson from Hancock Shaker Village with Baby Animals on Thursday and Electro Comic Mix Master Palamine McQueen at one o'clock on Friday. If the weekend means anything to you, I hope you have a good one. If you're looking for more serious, informative um, content, you can of course listen to WAMC or tune in 
you can tune in to WAMC or you can find our stories at WAMC.org. Um, my colleagues are working very hard, staying informed, keeping people informed. And uh, this is an absolutely ridiculous thing we're all going through. Um, but we are all going through it. So hopefully you have the, the people you need to help you. I have the people I need to help me. And I can only hope that the same is true for everybody out there. So again, if the weekend means anything to you, have a good one. And I will be back here on Tuesday with Elizabeth Stanley. Thank you for tuning in and stay safe in there.